The Genotype Diet is actually not exclusively a diet book. A diet book is something that you pick up if you want to get into a tuxedo for your sister's wedding. Very often, certain types of diets, if done by the person who's really not prepared for it or not fitted for it, will make them actually worse off than they were before. One of the things I had always been you know, struggling with is the idea that we have a series of diets that essentially try to give the same solution to everybody. One size fits all diet is called. And what I thought was actually perhaps maybe the more likely scenario is that each one of those diets is probably useful in certain people. Why I wrote this book is the further adventures of the work I did in blood types. What we're understanding now is that gene function is constantly changing from the moment you're born to the moment you die your body's constantly interacting with the environment and that environment is constantly turning different genes on and off based upon how the environmental conditions change there are six genetic archetypes which i call the genotypes genotype one the hunter typically very fit they're generally very long and lean they don't do well on a lot of the vegetable proteins which can make their digestive tract get irritated they do fairly well on certain types of cheeses and proteins that come from animal products. The second genotype is called the gatherer. The gatherer is what's called thrifty. The thrifty metabolism saves every calorie that it, it actually consumes. So what happens with these people is a lot of obesity, a lot of diabetes. Genotype 3 is called the teacher. The teacher is very wiry. So for instance, if you were to look at their skin, you would see large amounts of tendons underneath. It sort of has an immune system that prefers to get along with things, but they also have some of the problems that come from when your immune system is too tolerant and not vigilant enough. The fourth genotype is called the explorer. Everything is opposite, left-handed. They often tend to be Rh negative. Generally, people tend to have difficulties with regard to how they detoxify. So the Explorer diet basically is designed towards kind of mitigating the effects of living in a toxic world. The fifth genotype is called the warrior. Tall people, uh, prone towards cardiovascular problems, maybe above all. So the strategy with the warrior is to control the inflammation of the cardiovascular system and enhance the metabolism so that in later life these people don't become increasingly pear-shaped. The last genotype is the nomad. If you analyze the left and right sides of their body, they're very symmetrical. And this is one that's almost exclusively found in people who are blood type B. So it's about 5 to 6% of the population. There's a lot of statistics involved in this stuff. There's a lot of genetics involved in this stuff. And it's fascinating. But as a reader of the book, you only have to know <clears throat> certain things. For instance, is this finger longer than this finger? Do you have a square type face or a round type face? Is your lower leg longer than your upper leg? What's your blood type? All you need to do is take some very simple facts and use those facts in a very simple deductive way and out comes your genotype. I look at genotype and diet as not necessarily finding a different spin on the same old diet, but rather actually exploring an entirely new landscape for why people should eat a certain type of food.